some of you may be wondering, girl, why are you dressed like that? But an intellectual would say, girl, why are you dressed like Victor Rodemar from the critically acclaimed smash hit Nickelodeon series House of Anubis? <clears throat> Hi guys, today I will finally be covering House of Anubis. There's literally no way I'm going to be able to cover all three seasons in one video. So I think for now I'm just going to cover the first season in however many parts I need to do. There are a lot of characters in the show and it can get a little bit confusing. So to help you all better understand, I have come prepared with a visual aid, which is this dollar store dire I'm a poster board. <laughs> also, the show is just set up kind of weird. They jump really quickly from different plot lines. So I try to organize this in the most least confusing way possible. Uh, I hope it makes sense. This also took a lot of time, partially because I, I really wanted the outfit. The outfit was the first thing on my list to get. But also because I, I got a little bit too invested in this. I felt like freaking Picasso gluing these on. So House of Anubis was a mystery drama series based on a Dutch show called Het House Anubis, which I think just means House of Anubis. From my extensive research, and by extensive, I mean, I watched like two episodes and then just read through the Wikipedia. <laughs> I think that it's not that much different from the American version. I think like some characters are switched around and some characters kiss that aren't supposed to in House of Anubis, but that, we're talking about the American version. So House of Anubis aired on Nickelodeon from 2011 to 2013, and it was aimed at kids. Yes, kids, this is rated TVG, uh, and I have a real bone to pick with that rating because just in the first episode alone, I almost shit my pants because of how badly I got jump scared. Like, if I was watching this with my grandma, she would have died. Unlike how she actually died, which was from old age, but speaking of our first episode, introducing... Boom. Nina Martin, our main protagonist. Also, my Dollar Tree didn't have pointers, so I'm gonna be using these tongs. Season 1, episode 1, opens with our main protagonist, Nina Martin, who's American. That's a really important plot point. I'm not even being sarcastic. You need to remember that because she arrives at Anubis House, which is part of an English boarding school. Don't ask me the name of the school. I don't know. They never mention the name of it. But on the same day Nina arrives, another student. <laughs> Boom. Joy Mercer gets called out of class because someone is there to see her. Uh, Joy, there's someone to see you in my office. But it's real sketchy. First of all, there's no one there to see her in his office, so he lied. Oh, I forgot to introduce him. Fuck. His name is Eric Sweet or Mr. Sweet, which Mr. Sweet, like, are you a principal or a candy bar? But anyways, they're like, get in the car. She doesn't really want to get in the car. And long story short, Joy, she's gone. I feel like I need to put something here. So let me put this Vaseline here. Back at the house, Nina gets jump scared. <laughs> Bye. Victor Rodenmar. That's me! Victor is supposed to be the caretaker of Anubis House, and right away you kind of realize he's just kind of weird. Mr. and Mrs. Frobisher Smythe, the original inhabitants. They died. Okay. You are going to want to remember the Frobisher Smythes, though. I didn't have enough room on this board, but just remember that they're a prominent... A prominent last name. But like I said, Victor's just kind of weird. He he has a lot of rules. He has a raven. His outfit was really hard to find at Goodwill. We also get introduced to... Boom. Trudy Ramon, the house mother, who's super sweet, super kind, basically the opposite of Victor. As they're walking around, Victor's like, curfew's at 10, and he has a very specific routine for when it hits 10. It's 10 o'clock. You all know what that means. You have five minutes precisely, and then I want to hear a pin drop. And he does this like every episode. You have five minutes, you have five minutes, you have five minutes precisely. I told y'all he was kind of weird, but they're walking and Nina passes a room and she's like, what's that room? And Victor's like, that's the attic. I don't want to see you anywhere near the attic. I don't want to see you in the attic. If I see you there, I'll I'll kill you. He doesn't actually say that, but I mean, it was the vibe he was giving off. So Victor's like, this is your room. Nina's like, oh my God, I love my room. But then she spots a picture of Joy. Do you remember her? The girl who didn't want to get in the car, but she still got in the car? Yeah, her. And Victor's like, she's gone. She's left the building. He takes the picture, rips it up, throws it in the trash. All suspicious like. Weird, right? But back at the school that we don't know the name of, we just know that it's British. We get introduced to Joy's best friend slash roommate. Patricia Williamson. She's getting worried because she can't find Joy on campus, so she decides to head back to the house to try and find her, but y'all will never guess who's already moving in. Joy, I've been... Who are you? Nina. And Patricia's like, where's Joy? 
really? He was like, girl, I don't know, I just got here. And Patricia gets really angry, rightfully so, because imagine if your best friend of however many years is just gone and is suddenly replaced by a random American. Of course I'd be like, who, who the fuck are you? She starts throwing Nina's things out, but Victor pulls up like, Patricia, baby, Joy's gone. Joy has left. What, what do you mean she's left? Her parents came to school this afternoon and removed her. Patricia's like, that's a lie. You're lying, Victor. I don't trust you. Because she would never leave without taking her phone. Victor's like, girl, I don't know. I just work here. Give me the phone and I'll give it back to her. Except, Joy's never getting back that goddamn phone. Now get ready for this scene because we have a character introduction speed run. This girl right here, boom, Amber Millington, fashionista and the dumb blonde of the house. Stupidity leak. The girl in the purple, Mara Jaffrey. I don't fucking know, but she's supposed to, I'll try to pronounce it correctly, sorry. She's supposed to be the nerdy girl of the house. She loves books, she loves science, basically the opposite of Amber. The doggy in the plaid, very important character. Fuck. Boom. Fabian Rudder. He's basically like the guy version of Mara. Um, he's a geek, except he can play guitar. <clears throat> and the last two, Jerome Clark and Alfie Lewis. Yes, Lewis and Clark, because these two are a duo, not because they're dating, although that might've made the show a little bit more interesting. They were my heart stopper. <laughs> These two are a couple of goofster gaffster pranksters. But as the housemates are all like, Joy, where's Joy? Oh my God, where the hell is Joy? Nina walks in and it's dead silent. To say that Patricia doesn't like her is an understatement. Patricia hates her. Patricia basically blames Nina for Joy's disappearance, which I don't understand what she's trying to get at. So Nina, when are you gonna tell us what you know about Joy's disappearance? I guess when I actually know something. Oh, come on. One minute, I'm sitting next to Joy in class, and the next, she's disappeared, and you've taken her place. Does she think Nina murdered Joy? They're supposed to be like 16. I don't know how a 16 year old would orchestrate a murder. Anyways, Patricia's confrontation gets cut short because Nina gets a phone call from her grandma and her grandma's like, you having fun? You making friends? And Nina's trying to hold back tears. She's like, yeah, yeah I have so many friends. And then Fabian walks in, who at this point is the only person who's been nice to her. And he's like, girl, you good? <laughs> Nina's trying to play it off. She's like, I just have allergies. I'm allergic to cats. And Fabian's like, bitch, we don't have cats. Allergies. You guys have cats, right? No. Later that night, Fabian is talking to his roommate, Mick Campbell. He's supposed to be like a jock, an athlete, and he's currently, I said currently, Amber's boyfriend. Where the fuck is she? She's right here. Amber's boyfriend. Mick asks Fabian, he's like, so what do you think of the new girl? And Fabian's like, I'll let that happen. <laughs> he doesn't actually say that, but he's looking at her like he's ready to risk it all. But now that I've introduced you to Mick, I can finally introduce you guys to our side plot, which keep in mind, I'm still explaining the first episode. So one night, Mick comes into Amber's room, and of course Amber's like, oh my god, babe, you're here to see me because they're dating. But he's like, actually, no, I'm here to see your roommate, Mara. Basically, Mick is failing biology bad, and according to him, Mara is the biology babe. Yeah, I was kind of struggling on that biology assignment, and I wondered, since you're the biology babe, whether you could help me out. So Mara agrees to be his biology tutor and I'm just, this whole situation is gonna get weird quick. I'm gonna just tell you that. Tomorrow evening? <laughs> it's a date. <laughs> <laughs> but the next morning Amber's like, oh babes, you wanna watch a class with me? And he's like, yeah, wait a minute. I just need to give you a gift real quick. And he gives her this bracelet. And I just, I just want you to remember that bracelet. He says it's their, a token of their love. Just remember what it looks like. Really get a feel for it. Really get a vibe for it. Really get that in your noggin because that, that bracelet's coming back. Back to our main plot. Nina's on her way to school when she runs into this, this old, frail, elderly woman who explains how she used to live in Anubis house and that her name is Sarah. Sarah, my name is Sarah.
also I, I don't know what happened to Sarah's picture it printed out like that I didn't stretch it out like that you, you I know that seems like something I would do but it just that's just how it came out okay Nina brings Sarah to the old folks home that she's staying at but all the staff refer to her as Emily isn't that right Emily there's no need to shout I'm not deaf you know and she's like Nina you better not snitch on me my name is Sarah Nina and Sarah slash Emily are left alone and she's like girl I've been waiting for you here take this necklace and guard it with your life it will protect you from that old dusty disgusting evil house there's treasure hidden in that house and only you have the power to find and protect it but you must be careful there's danger in that house evil it's a bad house nina's like okay this bitch is definitely losing to the dementia allegations i we've never met but she's like i know you nina and you know me nina and of course nina's like whoa emily how do you know my name and the old lady's like well first of all if you call me emily one more time i'm about to beat your ass sarah my name is sarah and i know you but you need to beware the black bird she says all ominous beware the black bird and do you guys remember who had a black bird Back at school, Patricia's still not over Joy's disappearance. She's like, Dad, something's wrong. I can feel it in my clipping colored highlights. So she goes to Mr. Sweet's office and like, bitch, where the fuck is Joy? And he's like, girl, get out of my office. But after Patricia leaves, Mr. Sweet closes the door and he makes a face like, no, oh, shit. As Patricia is leaving Mr. Sweet's office, she spots the school photo and she notices in it that Joy's gone. But she's like, I could have sworn Joy was there that day. And honestly, it's just a bad Photoshop job. Back to our side plot, Amber's starting to get jealous of Mick and Mara stunned together all the time. Mara's like, girl, you don't need to worry about him. And Amber's like, it's not him I'm worried about. It's you. I know you fancy him, Mara. I do not. Mara's clearly a liar because it's kind of obvious throughout the episode that she kind of has a little crush on him, but she doesn't act on it yet obviously mara goes to mick and is like i don't know if i could tell you to you anymore amber's getting jealous and he's like D jealous of you jealous of you and me <laughs> that's hysterical <laughs> which okay <laughs> rude mick but he gets on his knees he's like please please he's begging her just like damn how badly are you failing biology mick please. okay just please <laughs> stop doing that mick's like rah thank you so much and he gives her a thank you present. And y'all will never guess what the thank you present is. This is a little thank you present. Oh, that's lovely. It's the goddamn bracelet. I don't I don't know why he does this. Maybe they were in the bargain bin. He got a two for one BOGO deal special. But now his girlfriend and his girlfriend's roommate have the same bracelet. To make matters worse, that night, Amber and Mara are on dishwashing duty. And Amber's like, um, who gave you that? And Mara's like, oh, your boyfriend gave it to me. Obviously, Amber's livid. She storms off. She throws the bracelet at Mick. And she's like, I thought this was a token of our love. And Mick, Mick is just kind of stupid. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't really get it he even fabian's like dog why would you do that and mix mix so dumb <laughs> nice one <laughs> you're so much crafty than i thought i think this is one of my favorite scenes out of context because it, why do they high five after taking a test like did they just successfully finish cheating Nice one. You're so much crafty than I thought. But no, it's because they've come up with a plan to prank Nina. Because remember, Jerome and Alfie are the pranksters of the house. And Patricia, the, Patricia just kind of wants to see Nina suffer. So they tell her that all new students have to perform an initiation ceremony. Fabian's like, girl, what are you talking about? But Nina's, Nina catches on. She's like, oh, you want to play games? I'll play fucking games, okay? So they explain that the initiation consists of going up into the attic at midnight, which according to Amber is totally haunted. And bringing something back down. All the world's a stage. And the men and women merely players. Bitch, shut up. <laughs> so this is their new history and drama teacher. Jason Winkler and all the girls are, are foaming at the mouth for him. During Mr. Winkler's class, Amber's like, uh, Mick isn't paying attention to me. I think he's over me already. I need to find a way to make him jealous. So she decides to kiss Alfie. Thou art. Thou art. Truly the yummiest boy I've ever seen, Romeo. What? That's not in the script, Amber. <laughs> so obviously Mick gets angry because first of all, this that wasn't in the script. That's not in the script, Amber. You, you guys know I was a theater kid. This scene was blasphemous. But also because I guess Mick did give Mara the same bracelet, but he didn't kiss her. 
yet. So it's now the night of the initiation and the kids all gather in front of the attic all creepy like. And Patricia, tonight she's feeling real villainous, real evil. So as Nina's making her way into the attic, she locks the door on her and is like, tell me what you know about Joy. And Nina says she doesn't know because she clearly doesn't know. She, she's American. She probably barely knows what a kilometer is. But Patricia isn't buying it. So she's like, the sweet dreams. I hope you like it up there. Victor ends up catching them because they're being loud as hell. And he's like, y'all, get back to bed. And he was thinking, oh, oh shit, he's gonna beat my ass if he catches me up here. So as she's looking for a place to hide, she trips and a secret panel opens up and she's able to successfully hide from Victor. Except Nina's like, what the fuck was that? Until she notices the necklace that the old lady gave her is glowing. And so is this necklace shaped hole in the wall. It's also shaped like something else. I'm not gonna say what, but... And she remembers, I did trip kind of weird. Maybe I fell on the wall, the necklace hit the wall and it opened this panel. So she tests it out and sure enough, the necklace is a key. She's like, okay, slay Sarah. So she tests it out again, but this time she sees glowing red eyes. And when I tell you I almost shit my pants. <sighs> Looking back, it's not even that scary. I think it was just so shocking. Like who, who edits that into a kid's show? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> the kid's gonna love this. Luckily, Nina is able to get out by picking the lock. And I like how Amber and Fabian are the only two who came back to check up on her. Even Mara was like, fuck her, I'm going to bed. The next morning, everyone's like, damn, Nina, you ate that up. But she tells Fabian, I gotta go back up there. There was something sketchy up there. And by sketchy, she means the glowing eyes. And Fabian, obviously trying to look all tough and cool, he's like, I'll go up there and help uh, protect you. Meanwhile, Patricia, th that poor son of a bitch, she's, she's definitely spiraling because she's like, I'm calling joy i don't know where joy is where's joy have y'all seen joy she's like i can't D mr sweet is hiding something so she goes into the bathroom and she removes this tile to reveal a peephole um they never explain i don't think patricia made this they never explain who made this or why it was here but i think that everyone just knows that there's a peephole leading into mr sweet's office in the girl's bathroom because later on in the series fabian comes to to peep in here too so I guess it's just a well-known fact in the school. I don't know. But Patricia came to peep and creep at a good time because Mr. Sweet is talking to Daphne Andrews. And they're like, ah, Patricia, Patricia's really on her asses. And I tell you, Patricia will not let this go. She is determined to find out what's happened to Joy. And we must be equally determined to make sure she never does, Eric. But she's like, I fucking knew it. Or sorry, uh, I fucking knew it. She's like, I have to find a way to contact Joy. So she tells Mara to distract Mr. Sweet while she goes into his office and steals her file. Patricia is able to successfully steal it, but we can't all have wins. Patricia forgets the key in the little drawer and Mr. Sweet later notices it and he calls up Victor and he's like, bitch, we got a situation. Uh, we have a, a situation. Victor's like, I'm on it, Eric. What's going on? We have to have our bags searched. Oddly though, Victor just takes the file out of Patricia's bag and doesn't address it. Nothing that shouldn't be there, no. Weird, he didn't say anything. Maybe he didn't find it. Is it there? Have you got it? No. So he did find it then? Obviously. I feel like this would have been a good opportunity to maybe, I don't know, expel Patricia. So then she's not all up in your guys' asses being like, where's Joy? I think you'll come to realize that the teachers in this show are, are kind of dumb. They're dumb like Mick. Speaking of Mick, if you thought the whole Mick, Amber, Mara drama was a lot, get ready because we have a brand new character coming into the mix and that's Alfie. So Alfie has a huge crush on Amber and he's like, she just had that whole bracelet drama with Mick. They're definitely on the rocks. This is really my time to come in and show her what a true man is. He also got kissed by her in drama class. So he's like, she obviously has to like me back. And Jerome, who's supposed to be Alfie's best friend, his other half, my heart stopper. He's so mean because he really hypes Alfie up. He's like, yeah, she's so into you, dude. But he knows that's not true. See you, mate. Yeah, see you. Good luck. Oh, sweet, stupid fool. And he always sets Alfie up in bad situations. For example, Alfie decides to leave a note for Amber in candy, which, candy? Um, okay, Mr. Sweet. But Jerome takes the initial at the end of the note, so when Amber sees it, she's obviously thinking it's from Mick, because who else in the house is gonna ask her out on a date? At this point, she doesn't know that Alfie likes her. Fast forward to that night, everyone said, fuck Victor's curfew. Alfie's getting ready for what he presumes is a mutual date. What girl could resist Alfie? Jerome is honestly such a dick. He kinda has a redemption arc midway through the series, but by the end of the show, you'll be like, oh, so that character development was for nothing, because he's still a dick by the end of the show. Like I said, no. 
no one's in bed. Fuck Victor's curfew. Nina and Fabian are up in the attic to investigate the spooky eyes. After a second jump scare, which, please, House of Anubis. One was enough, I have a sensitive heart. But Nina realizes, oh wait a damn minute, it's just a painting of a little girl, which honestly isn't much of an improvement. Like an old, dusty painting of a random girl, that's still pretty scary. Even scarier is the fact that Nina realizes the girl in her locket and the girl in the painting they're the same bitch. Also, there are these weird Egyptian hieroglyphs on the back of the portrait, and Fabian's like, oh shit, that's going on my Snapchat story. The old no, he takes a picture of them, and they're like, we need to go ask Sarah what this is all about. If you're wondering how the date with Amber and Alfie went, it went bad. <laughs> Alfie showed up in his Sunday's best, and Amber just pushes him out like, you're gonna ruin my day with Mick. D he leaves, Alfie, you should have said something, but Amber waits all night, and Mick doesn't show up, because Mick wasn't the one who left the note in the first place. So now Amber's thinking, first he gives my roommate the same bracelet, and now he stood me up like i said jerome's a terrible friend because the next morning he's like mick you know what i heard alfie and amber in the laundry room last night the laundry room oh you didn't know uh sorry mate i hate to be the bearer of bad news but it does look like alfie is a little bit more of a romeo than we thought right where are you going? To get Alfie? No, 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 no. I feel like Jerome just lives for the drama. Remember how I said the kids said fuck Victor's curfew? Well, they also said fuck school because Nina and Fabian are off to meet old lady Sarah while Patricia goes to the police station to report Joy as a missing person. Poor old lady Sarah just starts freaking out when she sees Fabian, which when I was watching this, I was watching this with my sister and she's she, she was adamant that Fabian was an evil guy pretending to be good. And I was like, girl, you're just being dumb. You're, you're being like Mick. Imagine if instead of being called dumb, um, we just use Mick like girl he's given Mick he's such a Mick but when Sarah started freaking out when she saw Fabian my sister was like see I told you he's evil um spoiler alert Fabian's not evil I think Sarah's just old and confused so sadly they aren't able to ask her about the hieroglyphs meanwhile at the police station the police officer is just giving Patricia a real hard time if you've got the surname you can track them down can't you and why do you think this family's gone missing again not the family just the daughter Patricia starts freaking out she starts crying the police officer's like, okay, okay, I'll try to find her. I bet he was thinking, I'm trying to get employee of the month, and if my supervisor sees you crying out here, that's gonna really ruin my chances. Patricia thanks him, thinking she's finally gonna get answers, but after she leaves, the police officer is like, bitch, we got a situation. I've had one of Joy's friends in here today filing a missing persons report. Yes, Patricia Williamson. Back at school, this isn't really all that important, but I have to mention it because it's the reason Mick and Amber break up. Spoiler alert, sorry, yeah, they break up. Mick is under the assumption that Alfie's trying to get with Amber behind his back because of what Jerome said that morning. So he pushes him and he's like, stay away from my girl. So now Amber's thinking, what the fuck, Mick? First you don't show up to our date and now you're a bully? So she decides that's the final straw. We're breaking up. I hope you're pleased with yourself. Alfie's in a lot of pain this morning because of you. Oh, please. Meanwhile, Nina shows Fabian this book that translates the Egyptian hieroglyphs on the back of the painting into stare, buried, and ate. So she's like, what if this treasure that Sarah keeps talking about is buried under the eighth? stare. Fabian's like, oh my god! I haven't mentioned this up until now, but the, the music in this show goes crazy. Like, just the intro alone. If this came on in the club, back up, because I'm gonna need some room. It's raining, so sorry if the lighting changes weird. Also, my dad said a hurricane's coming, so sorry if my house just takes off midway during this video. At school, Fabian is oddly confrontational with Jerome. He's like, I know you organized this whole Mick, Mara, Alfie drama fiasco, and if you don't fix it, I'm a snitch that you sell your homework to underclassmen. So how's your recycled homework business going on, Jerome? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure Mr. Sweet would love to hear about your thriving trade with the lower years. I don't know why he does this. It's so out of character for Fabian because he's like quiet, shy. My sister would say this is his true colors finally shining through, but I think it's because the writers needed to find a reason to put Mick and Amber back together. Yes, they get back together after Jerome's like, sorry y'all, I lied, I was bored, I was just trying to feel something. So Mick apologizes to Amber and they get back together all over the course of one episode. Okay, I got it seriously wrong, babe. But I just wanted to say, I'm sorry I didn't show up on the date, but I didn't know. Forget about it. It's too complicated. Here, I've got this for you. <gasps> oh, Mick, I love it. Let's hope he doesn't get Mara the same one. Back with 
Patricia, she gets a phone call from the cop who's like, girl, I just talked to Joy, she's fine. And Patricia's obviously thankful. She trusts authority, unlike me. So she thinks that Joy's safe. And this is further corroborated by the fact that she gets an email the next day from Joy. There's no smiley face at the end. <sighs> Joy always puts a smiley face. I'm not an idiot. I'm not, I'm not Mick. I know that's not Joy. So Victor does his whole 10 o'clock bit. He goes to bed. Funnily enough, I think his bedroom is also his office. <laughs> like we never see a separate bedroom he sleeps in. And when we do see him sleeping, it's just in the chair. Anyways, Nina and Fabian are like, let's pry up these floorboards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. And Nina was right because under the eighth floorboard, there's a key. They're thinking, oh my God, maybe this opens something in the attic. But as they're talking, Nina drops her toolbox. And obviously there's tools in there. So it's going to make a <laughs> sound. And Victor hears it. And he's like, what? You're gonna realize this happens a lot where Victor is very close to catching someone, but he can never see them in a very obvious hiding spot. But like I said, the, the teachers are kind of dumb. He's really giving Mick a run for his money right now. The next morning, Victor's like, nah, I know that wasn't a dream. N not like his sleeping position was comfortable enough to sleep, let alone dream. But he's like, I definitely heard some people messing around. Were they messing around in my attic? So he sets up a trap where he puts a feather on the door frame. Um, and so when you open it, the feather falls down. And then he knows that someone's been in there, which he's been dumb up until now. But I'll give him that one. That's pretty creative. Mara's just like Jerome. She's a terrible friend because at school, she's talking to Patricia about how... Or more so, she's complaining to Patricia about Amber. Amber was driving me crazy last night. It was Mick this and Mick that. It's sweet that they're back together again, though. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Nothing. You like him, don't you? Well, he is attractive. <gasps> I knew it! Uh, we were starting to get on really well when we were doing homework together. So you were happy when you heard they'd split up? Well, I was sorry for Amber, obviously, but... If I'm being honest, yes, I was. I'm just not sure Amber's right for him. They've got absolutely nothing in common. And the worst part is... Amber heard the whole goddamn thing. But now that Amber and Mick are back together, they decide to have a getting back together party, which I've never heard of this. Maybe it's a UK thing. But Nina's like, Fabian, this is the perfect time to go up to the attic and test out the key because everyone's gonna be distracted by the loud music. Victor's not gonna be home because he's getting his ankle checked out after slipping on that step we forgot to screw back on. Fabian's like, yeah. So they go up to the attic. Wow, this extra on screen absolutely fucks it up. But remember, Victor rigged the door. So as they're going in, the feather falls and now Victor's gonna know they've been up there. But Nina and Fabian are up in the attic shoving this key around trying to see if it opens anything and Nina finds this chest and sure enough it opens. Inside they find these I don't I don't even know what the fuck these are and neither do they. What are these? I have no idea. But Fabian's like my uncle is an antiques dealer he'll know what these are which when I heard this I got so excited because I thought it was gonna be like antiques roadshow. Y'all ever see antiques roadshow? Dating from the late 1840s. And then the liquid urine Yummy. <laughs> but no, he just ends up being some guy. But as Nina and Fabian are up in the attic, things are heating up downstairs at the party. I want you to keep your paws off my boyfriend. Yeah, Amber, get her. So Amber confronts Mara like, bitch, I heard you in the bathroom. Mara's playing dumb. Patricia walks into the kitchen like, I'm feeling peckish. Where are those chips at? And Amber's like, switch rooms with me, Patricia. Patricia, do you want to swap rooms with me? I know you don't like sharing with Nina, and I certainly don't want to share with Mara anymore. I know you're supposed to feel bad for Mara here, but... She had it coming, like. Later that night, Victor comes home and sees that his feather trap has been activated, meaning someone has been up in the attic. So he rushes downstairs and he's like, the, the party, party is over. over. Victor starts interrogating the kids and Nina finally cracks. You. No. Yes. But Fabian's like, oh no, not my girl Nina. No. She's covering for me. I did it. You? And this whole thing is gonna turn into an I'm Radio Rebel situation quick. Who was it? Me. It was me. It was me. It was me. It was me. I'm Radio Rebel. But Victor's like, y'all are fucking idiots. Everyone's grounded. And the kids are like, aw, man. The next day, Nina and Fabian again said, fuck school. So they take what they found in the chest to Fabian's uncle, the antiques dealer. He's like, y'all hungry? And he offers them lemonade. Especially as I make the best lemonade in the entire universe. Would you like a glass? Which... I'm not trying to be rude, Uncle, but I've seen Antiques Roadshow. I think I know what you mean by lemonade. Urine. Yummy. But Fabian's uncle is like, oh, these are phonographic cylinders. You just got to pop them into one of these, and then you can listen to whatever was recorded on them. Yeah. 
What, what was that? The caption says he burps, but I feel like I hear something and then he burps. It sounds like he just started. That, that's, he, that's how he makes the lemonade, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> back at school, Patricia's like, oh man, I forgot my French textbook. So she's like, I'm gonna run back to the house and go get it. But when she makes her way back to the house, she sees Victor and the police officer talking. Anyway, it's over now. Finished. Joy is buried. End of story. So, let us get on to the business in hand, brother. The organization of the next gathering. Whatever happened to Joy, heartbreaking. But whatever this organization is, was it a requirement to be able to do this weird smile and nod in order to join? Because Victor made the exact same face while burning Joy's stuff. Oh my god, you know who else makes this face? Radio Rebel. Poor Patricia, because not only has she just found out that her best friend slash roommate has just been buried, but she also missed the goddamn French test. Which, during this French test, Mara... I roll, am I right? But Mara sees that Mick is struggling on the French test, so she decides to fill out a second test with Mick's name on it, so she's essentially taking the test for him. Mara is so messy, but Patricia gets to school and she drags Mara into the bathroom and explains everything that she heard about Joy. She's like, there's a conspiracy. Everyone's in on it. The teachers are in on it. The cops are in on it. And Mara's just kind of like, um... You do believe me, don't you? Of course. But this bathroom's popping. Everyone's in here because Jerome busts out of the next stall and is like, Oh dear Mara. What are you even doing in the girls' toilets, creep? I don't agree with Mara often, but she got a point there. <laughs> Jerome ignores her question and is like, Girly girl, I know what you did for Mick. Mrs. Andrews, Mara cheated in the French test so that she could steal Mick from Amber. Oh, and by the way, Victor, Mara and Patricia think that you killed Joy. So he's like, look, I won't snitch if you do me a couple of favors. And by a couple of favors, he just means doing his chores. But remember, he also overheard Patricia's conspiracy theory on Joy. So he's like, listen up, Patricia, guess what? I'm a prankster but I'm also a medium. He tells her, if you meet me in my room tonight, I can help you contact Joy. Patricia at this point is pretty desperate. So she pulls up and immediately is like, oh, hell no. But Jerome's like, trust me, Alfie. He's really good. As they're all doing this seance, they hear what sounds like a high pitched scream and they all shit their pants. What was that? But what they don't know is that the scream is just Nina and Fabian up in the attic trying to work these cylinders because they're from the 21st century. They're not gonna know how to use a phonograph. <laughs> No, I've only ever used MP3s. So Victor goes to investigate the scream in the attic while Fabian gives Nina his cardigan because she's cold and he's a man. A man who wears a werewolf shirt. Thankfully, they don't get caught by Victor, but they do get caught by Amber, who's like, I heard you've been sneaking around on your kitty cat paws. You know what I think? I think you guys are dating. <gasps> We're having a secret date. So now Amber and Mick think Nina and Fabian are dating and Fabian's like, oh, are we dating? The answer is no. I mean, you and me, ridiculous, right? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. <laughs> Oh, that was painful to watch. During drama class, they're, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. It's not that important. But what is important is that Patricia sees out the window, a man, uh, this rando emerge from the forest, may stare into her soul and then just dip. Did, did, did anyone see that? What? That man, he was staring at me. And everyone's like, here we go again with Patricia. She's going crazy. After class, Mr. Winkler is like, girl, Patricia, what was all that? So she tells him everything that she knows, her whole joy conspiracy. And I'm gonna be honest, um, <laughs> their, their student-teacher relationship is kind of odd. I believe you. It gets even weirder later on. It almost feels like the writers wanted to make them a couple, but then someone was like, cut the cameras. Or the actors just had something going on backstage. Every single interaction they have has such a weird... They have such weird chemistry. Even my sister agreed that they had a weird vibe. And if you remember, my sister isn't the best at picking up on vibes. Do you guys remember what she thought about Fabian? But in the meantime, Amber tries to give Fabian a gift in order to congratulate him and Nina, because she thinks they're dating. Fabian! Look! I made you and Nina a scrapbook to put all your photos and ticket stubs and stuff in. She's honestly so nice, and it just pains me because 
I know the fate of her character. But Fabian really cusses her out. He's like, me and Nina all dating. He doesn't actually cuss her out, but imagine. <laughs> My sister would have been like, I told you. Amber's like, well, if they're not dating, then what the fuck are they doing up at night? So later that night, she decides to follow Nina and Fabian up into the attic with protection, of course. Obviously now Nina and Fabian have to let her in on the secret, which there's also such a weird transition right here. <laughs> What was that? Did someone bring a cow into the studio? Anyways, up in the attic, they're successfully able to listen to the recordings, and on it is a creepy little girl. But Amber's not having it because, yeah, the voice is kind of creepy. So she's like, I'm out of here. Y'all are a weird couple. So as she's making her way out, she trips and she makes a loud noise in the attic. Victor wakes up. He's like, T again? A fucking gen. Seriously? He goes to investigate the sound, and for, like, the 100th time, they don't get caught. I honestly feel so bad for Patricia because she just lost her best friend, and they've been, they've been replaced with a couple of friends up here, if you know what I'm saying. Joy? While Patricia is having this nightmare, or I don't really know if it qualifies as a nightmare, it's giving more of a psychotic break. She wakes up and she sees the man that she saw earlier at school just standing in her doorway, just staring at her. And she's like, ah! But by the time everyone gets to Patricia's room, the man's already gone. So now everyone's thinking Patricia's actually going crazy. Even worse is that the cop is like, yeah, no one was here. Victor's like, listen here, brother. Do you remember he called him brother? brother. Victor's like, brother, I really want you to keep an eye out for Selena. <laughs> the next morning, my poor girl Patricia is so traumatized she can't even go to school. So she stays home from school and Mr. Winkler is so worried about her that he decides to visit her at Anubis house. <sighs> Like I said, their relationship is a little weird. Also, I'm pretty sure Mr. Winkler purposely left school to come check up on Patricia, which Patricia can miss school. You can't, Mr. Winkler, you're a teacher. Like, did he just leave his class and everyone's like, do y'all know where he is? Speaking of school, everyone is giving back their French tests and Mick's like, well, I got an A, that's odd. Yeah, it's odd because remember, Mara took the test for him. Amber also thinks it's odd because she's like, I know my boyfriend, he's pretty dumb. <laughs> Ain't no way he got an A. So after class, she digs through Mara's bag and realizes the handwriting on Mara's test and Mick's test are the exact same. And I've been waiting for this goddamn moment. Did you really think you could get Mick by doing that? Oh. <laughs> yeah, get her out back! Ding dong, round one! Oh, Let her go! Aw, oh, man. What are you doing? That's right, take her side. Just because she cheated for you doesn't mean you have to defend her. Is this true? I was just trying to help. Obviously, Mick gets super mad at Mara and goes to Mrs. Andrews to tell the truth. Shockingly, she lets them off the hook, which is good for Mick, but bad for Mara because now he's mad at her. Back at the house, Victor is very curious about this man that Patricia saw. Can you describe to me exactly what this man looks like? It's very important. Get away from me! Me when I don't know how to end a conversation. Get away from me! Patricia's definitely on edge after last night, but as she's running away from Victor and out of the house, she's running towards the forest, the man appears. Patricia. And that's how that scene ends. Meanwhile, Amber's knocking on floorboards, opening up cupboards, trying to find clues in the house. And Nina's like, Sh she's so fucking annoying. But Nina's really eating up her words because Amber finds a secret hidden message behind the wallpaper. Help me, Sarah Frobisher Smythe. Okay, good knocking, Amber. The Frobisher Smythe's that miserable looking couple from that picture in the living room, aren't they? Sarah must be their daughter. So Nina and Amber theorize that Sarah Frobisher Smythe must be old lady Sarah from the nursing home. Amber's like, great, we could just go ask her. But Nina's like, oh, she's battling a couple demons up here just like Patricia. So they're like, okay, let's listen to the tapes and see if they say anything. Sometimes I see their faces in the mirror, but I know they're not there. And I know it wasn't an accident. He did it. He murdered them. Fabian's like, okay, we don't even know for sure if Sarah from the recordings and old lady Sarah are the same person, but he gets proven wrong quick because during a visit with her, she says the exact same things as the recordings. Sometimes I see their faces in the mirror. 
But I know they're not there. Meanwhile, Mr. Winkler's taking out the trash when he finds Joy's phone. And I know this is supposed to be a big, like, oh my god, he found Joy's phone moment. But I can't pay attention to that because all I can think about are those those big-ass roach stompers he has on. Like, those those shoes are insane. They're so big. And why do they curve up so much? They're so brown. I've never seen shoes that brown before. I bet if Mr. Winkler wanted to take a picture of these shoes, he'd have to switch to panoramic mode. Also, I wrote down notes for each episode about what I wanted to talk about. This, I, I only wrote one thing for this, and it was Mr. Winkler's shoes, question mark. I like how past me was like, the shoes, you gotta talk about the shoes. Anyways, Mr. Winkler gives Joy's phone to Patricia, and Patricia's like, I fucking knew it. I told you something sketchy's going on. Check this out. She shows him the school photo. And Mr. Winkler's like, whose hand is just floating on Fabian's shoulder? And they're like, oh my god, it's Joy's hand. They just forgot to edit it out. I told you it was a bad Photoshop job. Like, who, who edited this? Was it you, Mr. Sweet? Oh, it was probably Daphne Andrews, because if she couldn't even realize that Mick and Mara's test had the same handwriting. But Mr. Winkler, doing a lot more than he should in a student-teacher relationship, calls up the photo company and is like, uh, Hi, this is Mr. Sweet. Can you send me the photos again? And you guys... Joy's in the goddamn photo, which we already knew they edited her out, but this is solid proof. Meanwhile, Amber's like, all groups have a name. There's there's the Scooby Gang, the Big Time Rush. We also need a group name. I think we should make it official. Sabuna. Sabuna. Anibis, backwards. Sabuna. So now the group is called Sabuna. See what I see what I did the purple? It's like the color coded. Ain't that crazy? So they're now called Sabuna and they all hold a séance out in the forest to really solidify themselves as a group. They hear thunder so they're like, "Oh shit, we should start heading back." But as Fabian's grabbing his bag, he drops one of the artifacts and it breaks open revealing a secret hidden message. When daytime ends at midday, through tears of glass, the eye shall see. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Just like the girls' bathroom, the forest is popping <laughs> because it's the next day now, but Patricia is on her way to school when the man jumps out and is like, Patricia. Patricia. Patricia's obviously like, back up, freak, but he knows about Joy. Your friend has disappeared, hasn't she? Joy Mercer. How do you know that? He introduces himself as Boom. <laughs> Renee Zeldman, a private investigator. Because I'm a private investigator. My name is Ronnie Zeldman. He's honestly super sketchy. He says in order to help Patricia find Joy, he needs a picture of Joy. If you get me a photograph of her, then I can help you. Dog, what? I thought he said he already knew Joy. Why would he need a picture of her? What? What is he going to do with a picture of her? Anyways, sketchy Renee gives Patricia his business card and is like, call me if you know what's best for Joy. I think that she is in great danger. In great danger? From who? From you, Renee? To, if there's one thing I know, it's to never trust a man in a trench coat. <laughs> now wait. Patricia finally makes her way to school where she calls Mr. Winkler Jason. I need to speak to Jason. Which... Kind of odd how she's on a first name basis with her teacher. But she's like, so how'd it go with the photo company? Mr. Winkler pulls out the photos. He's like, bitch, proof's in the pudding. I'm taking this straight to Mr. Sweet. So Mr. Winkler shows his very compelling evidence to Mr. Sweet. And he's just like, he, immediately he's like, oops, you caught me. You're gonna have to talk to Victor. You need to speak to Victor. Victor. Back with Sabuna, they're trying to solve this riddle. But because Amber has been spending so much time with Nina and Fabian, trying to solve the riddle, Mick's starting to feel left out. And Amber can't exactly tell Mick what they're doing because Mick's, Mick's not exactly Sabuna material. But Amber ends up forgetting about a lunch date that she had with Mick. And that, that was the final straw for him. I'm so sorry. Something We're done, Amber. And I hate it when you call me boo. Yes, this is sadly officially the end of Mick x Amber. They do not get back together. Also, first of all, boo. I hate it when you call me boo. He really didn't need to do that in front of everyone. Like, we got e the whole house out here, including Mara, who she's just giddy with excitement. I know she's thinking, wait for me, boo. Oh, wait, he doesn't like being called boo. Later that night, Mr. Winkler comes to Anubis' house to talk to Victor, and Patricia's thinking, we're finally going to get some answers. But sadly for her, I don't think Mr. Winkler's coming out quite the same. Quite the little troublemaker, aren't you, Patricia? Yeah, Mr. Winker's like possessed or something. I don't know. But up in the attic, Sabuna are listening to the recordings. Amber's like, 
that sunset's so pretty. She's not taking the breakup well. When Fabian's like, that's it. That's the solution to the riddle. When daytime ends. Sunset. At midday. So they're like, okay, we've cracked the first part of the riddle, but what, what the fuck are tears of glass? Well, I'll tell you what they are. The next day, Fabian and Nina are helping Trudy cook when Nina's like, what's the history of the house? You know, she's just trying to make combo, but Trudy's like, I've been waiting for this one. She pulls out a bunch of photos and in one of them, they see a chandelier. Nina and Fabian are looking at each other like, tears of glass. So they're like, Trudy, you know what this house needs? that chandelier. Trudy's like, okay, property brothers. So they put up the chandelier and as sunset approaches, a green beam shines through the chandelier and onto a spot on the wall. And Nina puts her locket onto it. I don't know why that's the first thing she thought of, but she was right. Cause it opens up and they find the next clue. Sabuna reconvene and Nina's telling them about how it was so fun, fresh, wild that the green beam just shone through. And I don't know why, but in the background, they're playing the recordings. <sighs> Maybe just for white noise, but they hear a second voice on the recordings. And y'all will never guess who it is. I'm more convinced than ever that he's responsible for the deaths of my parents. But I can't prove anything. He's coming! You have five minutes, and then I want to be able to hear a bit. Victor... Meanwhile, Patricia's acting real paranoid for good reason, though, because there's one scene where just all the teachers just stare her down. <laughs> Patricia? Mrs. Andrews. Like, hi! Can I help you? Patricia is desperate. So she decides to call up Renee Zeldman. Remember him, the private investigator? And she's like, bruh, <laughs> Renee, we need to talk. So her and Renee agree to meet in the woods, which why the woods, Renee? We, why couldn't we meet up at like a coffee shop or like a Target? It's almost like he's trying to be as creepy as possible. First, he shows up in her doorway and now he wants to meet out in the forest. What is he, Slender Man? Anyways, Patricia tells Renee that she'll get him the photo of Joy if he is 100% honest with her. And he's like, my name's not actually Renee. My real name is Rufus Cena, but you mustn't tell anyone. Do you understand? It could put Joy's life in serious danger. Renee, or, or pardon, Rufus Zeno, then pulls out these pictures and is like, Patricia, do these look familiar to you? Which, what, what do these have to do with finding joy? Quick, explain, Rufus. I'm um, sorry, the sunset, which, rude, I wasn't done explaining yet, so I hope the lighting's okay. But Patricia's like, um, I think I've seen this one before and seen it she has, because later that night, her and Nina are in the bathroom when Nina drops her locket, and Patricia's looking at it like... Rufus gonna love this. She calls up Rufus, tells him all about Nina's locket, and Mara's like, who the hell are you talking to? I think I found the Eye of Horus. Rufus is like, girl, Patricia, you gotta get me that locket. So Patricia sneaks into Nina's room to try and steal the locket, but she gets caught by Amber, thankfully, because uh, I feel like that locket really compliments Nina's outfit. It would be a shame for it to go missing. But Nina walks in and is like, um... Hi, Patricia. And Patricia's looking at Amber like, you better not fucking snitch on me. The next day, Fabian's listening to the cylinder recordings when Miss Andrews catches him and confiscates his MP3. You know the rules. MP3s are not allowed in class. <laughs> when will I get it back? When I'm ready. Baby. I hope she doesn't listen to that. Luckily, Fabian walks in, followed by Mr. Winkler, who's acting real suspicious. We're ready for the staff meeting, Mrs. Andrews. T staff meeting my ass. But Fabian is able to get his MP3 back. He catches back up with Nina and Amber, who are trying to open this artifact, and he's like, give it here. He busts that shit open, and inside they find another riddle. Ket is the place to find, and there in the flames you must look behind. While researching, Amber realizes that Ket means place of fire or fireplace. So they start digging in the fireplace. And Victor comes in and he's like, I don't know what y'all are doing, but tonight, the, the, the curfew is 9 o'clock. I shall want you all in bed early tonight. Lights out at 9 o'clock. And I shall expect to hear a pin drop after that. Tell the others. Uh, 
No but buts, no buts. Later that night, Nina confronts Patricia about the whole locket incident, and Patricia's like, I can't believe she fucking snitched on me. Amber! Don't blame her. Also, I just keep looking at this fedora in the back. <laughs> Patricia would be the kind of person to wear a fedora. I wish she wore it in the show, though, because imagine if she's like, Where's Joy? But Nina's confrontation gets cut short when Victor walks in and he's like, I thought I said I want y'all in bed by eight. And the reason Victor wanted lights out so early is because of this staff meeting. Oh shit, we got the whole gang out here. There's, there's the cop, Miss Andrews, Mr. Sweet. Those two. <laughs> and their newest recruit, Mr. Winkler. I'm sorry, Patricia, but they got him. Mr. Winkler is now officially a part of the secret society. It's, it's brown. See, I wrote the, the thumb in brown. These are the bitches in the secret society. Throughout the staff meeting, they keep talking about how they're gonna tip the scales of life. And they also have these scales that have the students' names on them, which it doesn't make sense now, but it'll make sense later. The next morning, Patricia's like, I told you not to snitch. Oh, I asked you to keep a secret. I think Patricia just really likes throwing water on people. The Trudy should invest in some resealable pitchers or something. But Patricia meets up with Rufus like, what the hell are we gonna do now? Rufus is like, okay, you know what? I don't even need the locket. Just bring me the girl who owns the locket, which... Why? <laughs> Rufus is so weird. Like, that's even creepier than wanting the picture of Joy. But Patricia's like, all right, we'll keep in contact. Patricia rushes back to class where Rufus starts blowing up her phone and Miss Andrews is like, first Fabian, now you? So she confiscates her phone and looks at the texts, which first of all, Miss Andrews, mind your own goddamn business, but she sees that it's from Renee Zeldman. Also, uh, one out of 11 texts, were those all from Rufus? Like, what, what more do you have to talk about with Patricia? Are you, what's your favorite color? Oh, I like blue. What about you? What? Mrs. Andrews being extremely nosy reads the text and is like, Renee Zeldman, why does that sound kind of familiar? So she goes to Victor and she's like, girl, check this out. Don't this sound familiar? And freaking Victor, he knows right away. He's like, Renee Zeldman, bitch, this is Rufus Zeno. He's back. Rufus Zeno is back. Which I understand that Rufus uses a fake name to hide his identity, but why would he choose an alias that has the same initials as his real name? Like, <laughs> it wasn't that hard to put two and two together that Renee Zeldman and Rufus Zeno are the same person. Victor figured it out. And I don't know about you guys, but Victor is, he's not the sharpest tool in Nina's toolbox. <laughs> but speaking of Rufus Zeno, Sabuna are on their way to meet Sarah when they spot Rufus already inside. They're like, that's weird. Okay, maybe we'll visit Sarah another time because it's dinner time. During dinner, everyone's giving Patricia the silent treatment because of the whole water pouring incident with Amber. So she's like, fine, sorry, Amber, sorry, Nina for digging through your stuff, but hear me out. I had a really good reason to dig. I'll, I'll tell you later, but in private. After dinner, Sabuna are all on dish duty when Nina's looking at the oven and she's like, could fireplace mean like an oven? Okay, this is a real long shot, but... And sure enough, the locket opens the oven, leading to a secret passageway into the cellar. Which, man, that locket opens everything. I need me one of those. They got those on Amazon. <laughs> Imagine Sabuna asking Sarah where she got the locket, and she's like, <laughs> Amazon. Down in the cellar, I just know this place smells rank. Because there's random potions, a bunch of taxidermied animals, and this ring with a bunch of numbers on the inside. Look, numbers. A code? Sabrina. Sabrina. Suddenly, Victor starts stomping down, and the kids all decide to hide in this closet. But while they're hiding, they see Victor drink one of these potions. Twice. Yummy! Victor leaves, and Fabian's like, let me take a sip of this secret potion. <laughs> but the kids all decide to leave when they hear a spooky sound. <gasps> But the spooky sound just ends up being a cat that I love. This is my favorite character out of the whole entire show. Uh, Mr. Cat only gets two scenes. We never figure out his name, but he's such a good, beautiful, sweet cat that he deserves to be on the character board. 
Yes, I color coded him in purple. He's part of Sabuna. Come on. Nina and Amber are telling Fabian how they found this cat, and, and Amber's impersonating it. She's like, meow, meow, meow. And as Amber's meowing, Victor's on his hands and knees, Angelina Jolie's like, pss, pss, pss. I think we all know when people pull out the pss, pss, it's for a cat. So they're like, oh my god, it's Victor's cat. He's gonna freaking taxidermy that thing. So Amber's like, I can't leave it in the room all day alone. So she decides to fake sick so she could stay home from school. Meanwhile, Patricia's explaining, and she's lying to Nina about how she's friends with this antiques collector who thinks that Nina's locket could go for big bucks. And as soon as I mentioned your locket. <laughs> Why would you mention my locket? It just came up in conversation. Nina's not really buying what Patricia's selling, so she's like, okay, I'll go with you, but you're on crack if you think that I'm gonna bring the locket. So she gives the locket to Fabian for safekeeping, and Fabian's like, she trusts me? Oh my god. <laughs> During class, Mr. Sweet absolutely humiliates Vic. D plus and I was being kind. Also, Mr. Sweet didn't read out anyone else's grades. Like, why'd he come for Mick like that? Mara, excellent as usual. Patricia, not bad. Which just makes me wonder, how badly did you do on the assignment, Mick? Anyways, after class, Mara uh, is like, do you need a tutor? And Mick's feeling real down in the dumps. He's like, I'm hopeless at everything. everything. Mara's like, boo. Oops. I hate it when you call me boo. Babe, you're good at sports. But I guess Mick's dad isn't into sports. You're brilliant at sports. Wow, big deal. My dad wants me to be a doctor like him. Mara's like, yeah, that's what your dad wants, but what do you want? And Mick's like, damn, you're right. Which, I, why did it take Mara for him to realize this? Does, does he not think for himself? I don't think he does. At the house, the cat ends up escaping and Amber's waking up. She's freaking out. And I can't pay attention because of this Taylor Lautner poster in the back just glaring at me. But that's the end of that scene. Now, Patricia is in the woods with Nina. They're on their way to meet Rufus when they see Victor dragging an unconscious Rufus into the back of his truck. Remember, this is rated TVG. But Nina recognizes Rufus as the man that was seeing Sarah the other day. Y'all, things are getting spooky. Back at the house, obviously, now Patricia has to be let in on everything and now she is a part of sabuna so they're all talking all discussing fabian's feeling a little goofy a little silly he's like y'all what if those voices we heard on the recordings really was victor what if the second voice on those recordings is really victor that would make victor about 120. Oh, remember sarah on the recording she talked about experiments down in the cellar and what was victor making a toast to when he drank that funny colored stuff down there life okay so you're saying that Victor has some kind of an elixir that keeps him from growing old? Mm-hmm. It's getting even spookier. The next day, Amber and Patricia decide to go back down to the cellar before school to find Mr. Cat. There you are, Kitty Spice. What did she just call it? Kitty Spice. Kitty Spice? And I just fell in love with a gangster. Obviously, they find the cat, but it's not... It... It's, it's not real. It's... It's not real. <laughs> He runs in like what's with the screaming and amber was sobbing so was i at this point r.i.p mr cat but amber and patricia are so distraught they decide to ask trudy for help while this is happening nina and fabian are at school trying to solve the puzzle ring with the numbers when jerome walks in and remember he's nosy so he grabs the paper and is like what's this but um along with being a prankster a scammer a medium he's also a genius one two and nine Nina and Fabian are looking at each other like, get a load of this guy, when Amber and Patricia run in. Trudy's going to help us. Help you with what? Oh, Jerome, you're so nosy. Saved by the bell, as they say, because class starts and Mr. Winkler is talking about putting on a school play. How about we do a story about a young girl who loses her parents in mysterious circumstances when they steal some treasure from an Egyptian pyramid? Uh -oh. And then the girl's brought up by a weird guardian in a big old house. But then the guardian tries to steal the treasure and the girl has to try to stop him. But then she gets help from some friends from the future and they find the treasure and the girl's really happy and the friends are very rich and they all live happily ever after. The end. So yeah, now they're putting on a production of Sarah's life story. <laughs> that night, Sabuna and Trudy decide to confront Victor about Mr. Cat. Yeah, ask her about the scratches on his arm, Trudy. Clearly visible cat scratches. Quiet. Well, how did you get those scratches, Victor? Yeah, get him, Trudy. Victor finally cracks and is like, okay, there was a cat. There was a cat. 
a stray which I put in the cellar for safekeeping, as it was my intention to call the animal sanctuary. However, in the meantime, it escaped, and I have absolutely no idea where it is now. Liar! He killed it! There's nothing down there. All the potions gone. The dead cat, it's alive. So now the kids are looking guilty as hell and Trudy's like, what the hell, y'all set me up. And worst of all, Victor fires Trudy. Trudy, it has been very nice working with you over the years, but after this fiasco, I'm afraid I can no longer continue to do so. What? You're fired. <gasps> now Victor obviously knows the kids have been down in the cellar, so he decides to set up security cameras. Honestly, the angle these are at, the kids, the kids could try to avoid these. They could just pull out one of these up against the wall while the camera's right here. I don't think Victor would see y'all. Later that night, Nina shows Fabian an article on stolen artifacts inside Tutankhamun's tomb. And you guys will never guess who was accused of stealing them. Frobisher's minds. That's right, Fabian. And you know what this means? The treasure we are looking for could have come from Tutankhamun's tomb. That's also right, Fabian. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really care about Mick and Mara, but I do have to tell their storyline because at some point it does intertwine with the main plot. So after Mick's pep talk with Mara, he decides to apply for a UCLA sports scholarship. At UCLA in California. In California. As in warm all the time and beaches and surfing in California. No. <laughs> Mick thanks Mara for, I don't know, getting him to realize he has free will. And as Jerome is passing by, there's such a weird sound. And I'm holding you, Mr. Ma like, was that the sound of Jerome walking? And I'm holding you. But Mara bets Mick that she knows more about sports than he does. They have this whole big competition. But my only question is, when are they having this? Like, is this, is this during class time? Is this passing period? Dude, dude. Da -da. Mick ends up losing bad and he gets super angry. She's cheating. She must be cheating. What? Did you give her the answers? No. Yes, she did. To make me look stupid. Well, ha ha, everyone. Very funny. But later at the house, Patricia's like, Mara knew so much about sports because her parents were athletes. Like I care. Mick's like, oh man, I'm sorry, Mara. And Mara's like, uh, you can make it up to me if I let you to organize your sports scholarship. Please let me make it up to you. Help you with your homework. How about you let me organize your training schedule? Okay. The next day, Mick's dad confronts Mick about the sports scholarship and he really gaslights his ass. So, what's this I hear about you changing your study choices? I know you had your heart set on me being your doctor. No, you set your heart on it. When Mara walks in and decides to defend her man. Look, with all due respect, Mr. Campbell, I don't want Mick to have to go through what I've been through. My parents were pushy as well. I beg your pardon. Mara's able to convince Mick's dad, which, hooray, great, whatever. But on his way out, he runs into Amber, who's like, Mr. Campbell, bitch, we need to catch up. But she tells him about the security cameras, and he's like, ah, oh, hell no, nah. Mr. Sweet, you better take those down before I take your ass down. Ooh. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. He meant that, like, he'll shut the school down, because I guess Mr. Campbell's a, a high-profile figure. Back at the house, Fabian is finally able to solve the number riddle, which is 1922, or the year Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered, which t Jerome said, Jerome gave y'all the answer. He was kind of right in a way. One, two, and nine. Why didn't y'all listen to him? But Nina's like, you know where it says 1922? And on that CD holder out back. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually a CD holder. I'm just calling it that. Because uh, for some reason, I know an odd amount of people who have a tomb and it's always a CD holder or some kind of bookcase. I don't know where people keep getting these. I just looked it up and these aren't cheap. The CD holder is $299. This one, uh, King to in Common's life-size sarcophagus cabinet, full-size replica of the original ceremonial coffin belonging to Egypt's boy king. A thousand dollars? Oh, uh, well, it is on sale. Oh, shit. This guy put some drinks in there. You know, I kind of get it. <laughs> some of these rooms look sick as fuck. Imagine if I put my albums in there. My bookshelf is getting kind of full. I do. do I want one of these? Maybe this whole time I kept meeting people with these because the universe was like, girl, you need to get one. Anyways, Nina and Fabian are able to inconspicuously sneak up into the hallway and Nina's like, it says 1922. So Fabian starts immediately stripping. The year 1922 gets him all hot and bothered. No, he uses his sweater to cover up the camera so Nina can quickly try to find where the artifact is, which she finds at the bottom 
of the sarcophagus. Notice how she didn't find it inside the sarcophagus. Because I bet if she opened it up, a bunch of CDs would just fall out. Later that night, Sabuna minus Amber. I don't know where the fuck she is, but maybe catching up with Mr. Campbell. I don't know. But they're they're reading the riddle. Be leathered and clasped. Here's the only place where yesterday always follows tomorrow. Nina's like, be leathered and clasped might mean a diary or an old book. And you know where they got a lot of those? Under the stairs. So they're digging around. I know it smells musty in there. But Nina finds something that really spooks her. <laughs> Fabian, look, it's from 1925. Victor, but he looks exactly the same as he does now. Meanwhile, the teachers are like, Victor, you gotta take those cameras down. Victor's like, Eric! But it's two against one, so Victor ends up having to remove the security cameras and rehiring Trudy, which is something else that Mick's dad asked for. I forgot to mention that. The next day, Sabuna are looking at these photos and they're like, either Victor's really into skincare or there actually is an elixir of life. So they decide that tonight they're gonna go back down to the cellar, grab a couple of samples of these vials and see what's actually inside of them. And you know Jerome, he's nosy. He overhears the whole goddamn thing. He runs back to Alfie and is like, girl, it's prank time. I'll get back to that in a bit when the sun sets in that universe but um i gotta talk about mick and mara they're they're training yay okay mick and mara aren't the worst couple in the show there are a there are some that are very bad later on in the series but every scene with them is just a snooze fest like mara's kind of boring mick is actually boring i think i may be biased because i do like amber as a character and i just think it's kind of weird how she was trying to get mick was trying to get with freaking or mara was trying to i don't and they were roommates oh my god they were roommates but the worst part of all the one thing this show does that fills me with uncontrollable rage is that every single time mick and mara are on screen they will play some variation of this piano medley listen there do you no definitely not every single time without fail the only other time they used this medley was with patricia and mr winkler i'm worried about you yeah well join the club i'm worried about me too which that's weird right like why are they using the same piano medley for a couple that are they're using for a teacher ex student like what are you guys trying to say oh they also kiss and they my teeth <laughs> must have been real excited about that new record so mara rushes back home to tell patricia all about it and patricia had the exact same reaction i did we kind of kissed uh-oh patricia really eats her up on this one rightfully so because did she lie i don't think you're his type he's not going to date you you've got nothing in common what do you even talk about his training program riveting but don't get me wrong i like mick He's not exactly an intellectual challenge. And that wraps up the first part of season one. It's what's gonna happen? Where the fuck is Joy? Is Rufusino alive? I don't know, dog. All this and more next time. <laughs> if you have made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I did not think I was gonna take this long to record. Subscribe if you haven't already. You've already watched the whole video. Come on now. Girl, get out of here. But uh, this took a lot of work, so uh, make sure to comment your favorite character, because I'm kind of curious. Uh, if I see M Mick or Mara, you're blocked. You're absolutely blocked. All right, guys, it is fast approaching 10 p.m., so I, I gotta go drop a pin. Bye, guys!